Mm. Actually, tastes like Chardonnay. Mm. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, fuck, it smells like Chardonnay. I know, it does. <laughs> Welcome back, guys, to another week of Wine for the People. If you don't know what we do uh, right now, we'll bring you up to scratch. Basically, we're a blind wine tasting program. We're trying to build the world's largest and most inclusive wine community, which you can join today just by clicking the link in the description below. Jump onto Discord. You can chat to us directly and give us crap for all the wines that we get right, wrong, or indifferent. Big ups to Sometimes Always for selecting the wines. Let's get into it. Uh, looks like we got six white-ish wines. Uh, on the nose, goes up your nose a little bit, to be honest. Like, it's got quite a like strong scent to it. Uh, instantly, I'm thinking, uh, I, I say serious white wine in the sense that, like, I think of Chardonnay as a serious wine because it's got, like, all these different interesting characteristics going on. And I think of, like, Pinot Grigio as more of, like, a simpler white wine because it's just a bit, like, one note. Okay, cool, fun. Oyster shell, kind of not really, a bit nondescript, very closed. Not really giving much, to be honest at all. I was like Chardonnay, for sure. Probably a bit more oak than we've seen on a few Chardonnays recently. Definitely like a secondhand French oak kind of vibe. It's not Chardonnay. Uh, very citrusy, very lemony on the palate, um, is what I'm getting from that. Uh, and then like a little bit funky on the way out as well. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. Is that fun, really? Look, to be honest, this isn't the most captivating wine. There is definitely nothing wrong with it. This is actually, it's a nice, tasty wine. There's, there's nothing offensive about it at all. It's just not the most complex. It's not shouting what variety that it is. It doesn't have an awful lot of, a lot of acidity. It's actually quite moderate, which isn't unpleasant. Again, it just makes it drink easier. It's a nice, easy drinking white wine that the perfect time for this is Sunday, 11 a.m. Like, I've used this metaphor before about like, Natty wines are at WOMAD. That's the sort of thing where, like, you're working in an accountancy firm and then you find out that someone used to have dreadlocks before they worked there and shaved their head. Like, there is some, like, it's surprising that that tastes as natural as it does. Dos! A little bit darker in colour, probably leaning on that kind of gold spectrum, nothing too cl clear and brilliant clarity. Um, it's a bit deeper and richer. Honeyed, lifted, it seems like this is might have seen like a little bit of skin contact prior to ferment, but only a little bit, maybe 24, 48 hours, which kind of gives this unctuousness um, to the nose, a little bit headier, which is quite pleasant. It's actually more of a thrilling wine than wine number one. Again, quite citrusy, uh, a little bit uh, quite lemony as well, similar to the last one, but like a less, like a less intense version of it. I, I probably like this one more, is where I'm leaning towards. What a yummy wine. Textural, lifted acidity, driven. It's the perfect balance between the amount of acidity and dry that we've got. It's not too much, not too little. And the texture, which I would actually say is relatively full bodied, but there's no oak. Gives me Chardonnay vibes, but nothing too oaky. Maybe like a... Petit Chablis kind of thing or something like that. The acidity is really lifted and bright, so it really does remind me of something like that. Pin, maybe like a Pinot Grigio or like a Riesling or something like that. It's quite light bodied. Yeah, like I can feel it coming down here sort of thing, like the acidic sort of white wine thing that goes on, which is typically not something that I really enjoy in whites. Like I'm not, a, I'm more of a red wine drinker than I am a white wine drinker to be completely honest. So I'd be going around about 35 bucks a bottle and I want six. My number three, it's uh, orange looking boy. This should be fun. Riper peachy kind of vibes, orange marmalade, bergamot thing, kind of very classic little orange wine thing. Very much so a middle of the road orange for me. Like some of the ones that I've had that I really stand out do have like this really cool like butteriness or like a really sweet stone fruit flavor to it. Lanolin, oh great. Marmalade, like like uh, really, really good mandarin citrus marmalade. Awesome, uh, incredible amount of lanolin, but not in the sort of oxidative way, in a really um, sort of fragrant, fresh way. I don't know, let's say it's Vidello, because why not? It could be a Skinzy Vidello. And because it's shot in the dark, but I know the boys won't have taken it. It's a weird one that Vidello comes out. I'm gonna look like a king on camera. Very good. Awesome suede-like tannin, uh, great structure. Again, really ripe stone fruit, orchard fruit, all that kind of thing. But yeah, that nice little marmalady interest. All the makings and hallmarks of a really good, uh, uh, well-aged, actually, elevaged uh, orange wine. So we're talking about a little bit more age in the cellar. Bang on orange wine. Uh, 12 bottles for me, for sure. Happy to pay 45 bucks for a bottle or something like this. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Wine number four, back into the traditional white wine world. Not a lot coming through it, a few little flecks floating around the glass, but I'd say that it's a pretty traditionally filtered wine. It's smelling 
a little bit oxidative. And by that, I don't mean how the wine was made. I think actually how it's, it's been maturing probably a little, a little while. Feels already like a, you know, textual Albarino-esque. Definitely had some skin to it. Definitely a bit of oak there as well. Quite shy at the minute. I think it needs a bit of time to open up. Really savory. Really interesting and savory. Meaty and walnutty and stuff like that. A bit smoky too, but in a really nice way. Could be a little bit oaky, like a little bit of uh, time spent in barrel in this one potentially, or I might be confusing that with, no, I think, it, I think it has got a little bit of oak to it. Really broad heat, lower acidity, quite ripe, a little bit oxy, maybe from a warmer vintage. Not a wine that I would jump at the chance to be able to get, uh, to be honest, it's, I, I'd search for maybe a bit more refreshment. Oh, I can't place that smell, but it's it's really, like, it pops into my head heaps, like childhood memories or something, I don't know. It's almost like a little bit smoky or something, I'm not sure, that's a really, that's perplexing. Um, uh, maybe it's looking a bit quiet and shy at the minute, not too sure, but it, today it's not looking incredible. Um, but it's definitely some good winemaking behind it. Um, I'd grab two bottles, just one to like study and really dive deep into now and then see if there's something to save for a later date and kind of forget about that bottle and then maybe in like four or five years time, I was like, oh, let's see how this is going. And it might be like, whoa, holy shit. We've, I'm so glad that I had one for now. We've got another white wine. Another white, another one, another one. Nice kind of cereal, like special K kind of thing going on. Number two, I believe, that was saying like, it smelled like quite sweet. This one definitely has that as well. Like oh, home, Siri, I'd like to go home. Smells awesome, smells bang on. That is lean, ripe, nashi pear. I'm already in like suave Gargaga territory here. Maybe even like early harvested Chardonnay. Smelling nice and tertiary, which is really great. Love those kind of really bright orchard fruits and citrus and all that kind of thing like that. But to see these like kind of nice nutty tertiary characters is always quite delightful in wines like this. It's definitely got the acidic fruit. It's not as sweet as I thought it was going to be, but like I can see where that smell has gone on the palate. I'm shocked that I haven't guessed any of these are Chardonnays yet. That last one has to be. It's got to be Chardonnay. There's no way you've rolled six wines out of here without it being Chardonnay because I don't think this one is either. Usually I would associate a wine of this quality with Riesling and it doesn't taste like Riesling. It tastes like something a little bit more textual. It could be Gruner Veltliner, maybe Suave, like Garganaga. Chardonnay, it, honestly it does taste like a, um, you know, an early harvested Chardonnay that's sort of like a, you know, uh, what we call fizz based. Sparkling base. An exceptional wine. I, I am completely in love with this and I'll be grabbing a dozen for damn sure. 55 to 60 bucks I'd be happy to pay. But this could be like some kind of Chardonnay or even Sauvignon or even a Sauvignon Chardonnay blend. Whatever it is, uh, I, I love it. I think this is bloody exceptional wine. All right, number six, what are we finishing on? Yeah, definitely oaky vibes. Not too much going on. Oaky, little bit of like lemon, little bit of pear. This isn't Chardonnay either. What the, can't believe we're having six white wines and not one of them Chardonnay. Um, fizz, I can really a little bit of fizz. Do you notice that when you pour them out? Like a little, little bit, little bit of butter. Oh, you shake them. Oh yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's an interesting methodology. Mouthwatering acid. Crazy acid. I thought one of those other wines had more acid than this, but damn. Yeah, honestly, it's a good, it's yacht wine. Not like flex on a yacht, more like, actually this is dinghy wine. Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really struggling to separate these wines. And like, I think drinking them all they're, all, they're all quite similar to me. I haven't got a super advanced wine palette in, in case you didn't notice. And separating them, like again, I'm just getting sort of like citrusy, a little bit acidic. Uh, like citrusy, acidic, 30 bucks, three bottles. That's what I'm feeling about the majority of these wines. Feels Pinot Gris-esque, you know, Nashi pears, early bottled perhaps. I'm salivating. That's acidity, that's acidity. That's what we want to see. This this is exemplary. You're salivating and your eyebrows go up. This is a wine of refreshment. That wine does that to me and for that reason, just easily straight off the bat, I'm into 12 bottles. Not too sure what it is. It's got the acidity of Riesling, probably an Italian grape variety. Picked, harvested a little bit earlier. It's just bright and sprightly and fun. Uh, and that's all I would expect from that. So see what the other guys think. Welcome back, we've got another another week, another six wines, all white wine. All white wines. Ish, yeah. ish, ish. Yeah. This is one of those like, like wine lineups will separate the men from the boys. Yeah. As far as like what what you know, irrespective of that. Yeah. But like there, you could be tripped up a lot of times on these. Uh, I really struggled to to tease apart on with you. Yeah. I, I didn't quite understand what was going with some of these. None of them were really like jumping out at me as being really no. like in crazy broad. But I reckon it'll be really interesting to see if any of them are Chardonnay because I don't think any of them are. Oh, Neither. Some. Matt, you reckon some are? I reckon at least I reckon at least one. Is. Uh, wine number one. Liked it. Um, nothing to write home about um it was it was probably a bit like over oaked 
as far as the, it kind of dominated the fruit, but um, it was still refreshing. I still liked it. Yeah, well, lucky. Don't keep us in suspense any longer. What was it? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah that's good yeah. value. Yeah. Oh, oh Rinto. Rinto. Damn. There you go. That's cool. So this is cool. So uh, the other wine co is actually Shaw and Smith's um, I, well, other there, little side there. hustle. Yeah. 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 Like, what, like, well, like what yeah, we had yeah. with the, the Mac Forbes thing last week, it's the same kind of thing with this. It's like experimental batches, they change it, they can kind of do whatever. Yeah, so this is grown by Ricketera Farm, so Ashley Ratcliffe. Um, you know, does an awesome job with all these varieties up in the, the Riverland. So it's actually really interesting to see, um, you know, quite an established producer of really great repute jumping up to the Riverland, playing around with a Rinto, of course. Mm. Yeah, I've seen it done a couple of different ways. Rick and Terry themselves make a, a wine in this kind of similar style. It didn't have that kind of oyster shelly thing that a Rinto really has when it's made like this, but um, still a pretty solid wine. Definitely, definitely worth having a crack at. All right, wine number two. Yeah, rated this. This was pretty solid. I <laughs> thought it was extremely similar to the first wine. I don't think it will be now because that. You know, as we were saying, tasting a bit more like Chardonnay, but I thought it was just like citrusy, a little bit acidic and white. Yeah. And... Oh, okay. What is That's it? a lot. That is a lot for that. What is that? Riesling. It's Riesling. There you go. But German. German from the false. Wow, so it's, it's fermented dry, um, clearly. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks like a. It looks Australian. Uh, so it must have been a pretty warm year, 2018 up in Pfalz. Mm. Um, and it's probably, it's not one of the coolest regions of uh, Germany. Yeah, it's ripe. It's, it's ripe. definitely ripe. Um, yeah. But yeah, cool, delicious. Um, I mean, as far as German reason goes, that's pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's like 58 bucks for German reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of the 12 baggers right Agreed. here. Agreed. Agreed. This was cracking example, cracking example of orange wine that I think anyone could enjoy. There was absolutely nothing offensive about it. It no. was it was delicious. Uh, yeah, I said uh, twelve, and I was happy to pay upwards of forty five dollars for that. Mm. Yeah, there's a good, there's a really good, really really good example. Happy happy to pay yeah north of forty. What have we got? Whoa! Oh, bargain! Damn. Dude, that is bargain. Oh, that's cute too. Italian plastic. Italian plastic. So we've we had have Italian. We had the we, we had, had Italian pet nut on the on the on the pet nut episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We that's had right. one of their pet nuts. This is really good. That wow. is really good. For I mean, twenty four dollars. Twenty four bucks. Bottle. The label though, it's really good. What is that? It's just a couple of smiley faces. Hey, babe, I've got a date idea for you tonight. We can either have a family burger box <laughs> <laughs> or an Italian plastic orange wine. <laughs> uh, Semion Musket Gewurz Tramina. Wow. wow, cool. Flurio slash Adelaide Hills. Wow. Cool. Great value orange really wine. Really good orange wine. Really great value. Damn. Uh, I'd love to interview these guys and actually figure out where they got that name, Italian Plastic. That wine there, at $24 a bottle, yep. orange wine, that is a no-brainer way to start. You, no you, brainer. This is one of those, like, um, I've got an itch that I can't scratch now with orange wine. It's like, I've had this, what, yeah. how else can I go? And then you're going to be spending 120 bucks on Radicon by no yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, from, from really heights for me to, to the bottom, this is this was didn't shine for me. Yeah, really. yeah, I wasn't big into it. I thought it was either Viognier, like a Rhone Valley white or Vidello. All right, what do we got? 40 bucks, there you go. Mm. Bang. There you go, 40 bucks. And it's Unico. What is it? <laughs> Imported. Imported. Vino de Pasto. Bianco something, rather. Where the is it from? Tosca. Oh, no, it looks like it must be uh, Spanish. Pedro Jimenez. <laughs> Palomino and Pedro Jimenez. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Land. <Like so> much <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'm not, um, not too excited about this, to be honest. Nah. Um, man. Yeah, pa yeah, Palomino, Pedro Jimenez are the uh, great varieties that most people uh, would know. People. <laughs> you know no. <laughs> Pedro. Oh, well, Pedro's out in the vineyard. Yeah, like, I literally thought out. you were doing that thing. And it's like, Palomino. It's Palomino. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on upwards, we have uh, this cheeky little number. You're a fan. Loved it. Really bright, Ab aromatic. Clean. Absolutely loved it. Like that cool, like cracked wheat, like OT, really lazy mm -hmm. character. Could chew on it for days. Absolutely loved it. Could it be Chardonnay? We haven't I, seen a Chardonnay yet. I think this might be Chardonnay. It's really funny that you guys are always like, do you think it could be Chardonnay? You look at me like I'm the authority on it. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole bit is I've got no fucking idea what Chardonnay is. <laughs> what is it, Lachlan? Mm. Seven. Mm. It's in Shardy territory. It's in Shardy territory. I don't know what it is. Uh, do Terra Alta. Wow. Alcala. Alcala? Al Alcala. Cool. Cool. Hey, this is White Grenache. 
Wow! <laughs> From old vine on its fine leaves. Bro, you can't yeah. just go making things up. Grash Blanca. Sp yeah, Grash Blanca from Spain. Holy shit. That's fucking cool. That is very cool. Yeah! That is really, really cool. Uh, into that. Yeah. Really, really into that. Stop Spanish Inquisition. I, that, I, is, I, that is actually really cool. I know a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a call later. I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. <laughs> That's awesome. Fuck yeah. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's great. You're telling me that I've got to start factoring in when I taste things like that, that I've got to start guessing that they're Grenaches. You know how there's like a Pinot Noir, Pinot and Pinot, Pinot, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Blanc, and a Pinot Gris. Gray. Yeah. White, red, and grey. Yeah. And there's another one. There's Meunier in there as well. So I didn't so... think Grenache is in that category. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, white, white Grenache. Cool. There you go. Grenache Blanc. Um, fuck yeah. Still, no Chardonnay. Oh! I don't think this last one is. This is a this is a wine I want to drink on a diggy and go fishing and and drink this while fishing. <laughs> yeah, no right. <laughs> where where are we at, Lockie? Oh! 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 Awesome! Cool. That's killer. Great. So, uh, Falangina, the other great variety that uh, is commonly known around, well, uncommon because not many people know it, but um, it is the the common variety around um, uh, Campania. Uh, very close to where Fiano is, so it's Fiano and Valangina. Uh -huh. um, they all grow literally in the same spot, and this was, I guess, the the lesser known one, the white, the variety mm -hmm. that most people kind of wouldn't wouldn't really associate so, with. Yeah. Are you yeah. saying that this is Fiano for hipsters? No, nah, that's Greco. Uh, that's Greco. That's Greco. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Fiano is for hipsters. Not his heat. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, obviously, Chalmers have uh, an amazing spot up near Mildura. They bring in all, all of these great varieties. They, indeed, are the ones that imported it in the first instance. And they planted out, out, they've got another vineyard in Heathcote. That is the first Australian Falangina I've ever tried. Well, it's probably and the it's first ever Australian Falangina. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably. That's cool. Yeah, a variety that, yeah, no, doesn't capture the hearts of many winemakers, but when it's made like that, I want to drink it. And it's at 28 bucks, and it's a daily driver. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fantastic. It. Great. Yeah, yeah it's, you sing that pretty, pretty, pretty well. Well, if you compare it to old mate down here that was 58 bucks or whatever, like they're not that dissimilar in terms of drinking. So spend the 28 bucks and go buy you the family burger box. You know, after three, you can even get a bonus bottle. Yeah, forget about it. How yeah. good. Anyway, it's been another week. Thanks, Henry. Thanks, Noah. Thanks, See you guys. Thanks for joining us. Ciao. Ciao.